What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Elixir ROM based on Android 13 and this is the version 3.6 official build. The build date here is 23rd February 2023 and it does include the gapps and stuff you do not need to worry and if you want to flash this ROM you can check out the flashing guides from the description. In the about section this is how it looks like we have the project Elixir logo right here and it shows the wallpaper that you are using. By the way I have been using a wallp apps wallpaper. You can get the app from the description. Here we have this your devices officially supported tab and on the bottom here it shows maintained by Pallav Chip Parikh. So huge thanks to the developers of this ROM and the Android version is Android 13. Security patch here February 5th 2023 so the latest one. The Elixir version shows as 3.6. The stock kernel here is the 4.14 Bullex and the SNX status shows as enforcing and here the device name is Redmi K20 Pro of course. Talking about the system panel this is how it looks like and in here we have this Elixir updater. From here you can check for updates if you want and we have the gestures right here. There we get the swipe to screenshot I have turned it on and this is how it works we have the share edit delete and the google lens feature. Also the capture mode appears if there is a lot of scrolling space and we have the double tap to wake and stuff this is just the ambient display wake. Let me go back we have the system navigation gestures and in the settings of it we have the full screen gestures, back gesture haptic and the swipe to invoke assistant. If you scroll down we have this pill length and the left edge right edge customization. Then we have the two button and three button navigations. We have this press and hold power button action you can change it between power menu and the assistant. We have the quickly open camera, the playback control, adaptive playback and the one headed mode is also there. Let me go back and in here we have the power up camera settings and of course we do get the camera calibration option if you want and we have these camera sound effects and the front camera raised dialog, camera LED etc customization. Talking about the home screen this is how it looks like if you are wondering about the launcher. Let me show you which launcher is this. Okay so this is the quick step launcher present by default here and in the recent panel this is how it looks like we get these buttons like the screenshot lens and the clear all and the lock app option then on the bottom it shows up the RAM usage and here actually you can customize that from this recent settings in the launcher customization and we have this mask settings too we have this hidden and taps over here then background blur depth and in here you can disable the suggestions if you want then we have the app drawer customization themed icons enable app drawer search bar etc and the row height background opacity etc you can customize in the home screen settings we do have the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen then the wallpaper scrolling and zooming at a glance and the other features Google search bar option and the themed icons, lock layout etc are there and in the icons we can change the icon packs and the notification dots, icon size, font size, everything you can customize. To the left of the home screen we get the Google's discover page, everything is smooth enough but of course you do not get the high refresh rate, this is only running at 60Hz and everything is smooth enough I would say in 60Hz if you don't need more refresh rate than that then definitely you're gonna be fine but if you come from ROMs like Evolution X you're definitely gonna miss those higher refresh rate options. And the widgets some are working some are not like this google clock widget and stuff is working fine then we have the subscriber account widget is working fine and here sometimes the weather widget shows as network error and here the battery widget it's just not really working I would say sometimes it shows the phone battery but it's just not showing up the bluetooth battery over here even when I'm connected to a bluetooth device properly and here if you are noticing on the status bar you will get to see the bluetooth battery percentage or the bar over here so this is how it looks and of course I have customized the status bar that's why you can see the background chip on the clock and stuff I'll show you those customizations later on but overall this is how it looks. Now one complaint I do have on this ROM is the fingerprint scanner experience it's very bad let me actually give you a demo I just double tap to sleep and I'm double tapping to wake it's just not working and let me actually show you in the lock screen if I go like this and if I tap the fingerprint scanner right now it has worked but sometimes I have noticed it just doesn't work. And again in the lock screen. Okay so now the fingerprint scanner is working but sometimes it just rejects to work. I have to use the face unlock for that. Now in the display settings let me show you. I do have this double tap to wake enabled. Even then the double tap to wake is not working. And in the gesture settings if I enable this double tap let me actually show you if it works or not. Even I have this double tap ambient mode enabled but then again it's just not working. But I do have the pickup option enabled so let me actually see if the pickup works. So yeah the pickup option works. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner, yes, it does unlock. As you can see, the screen of FOD is simply not working over here. I have to wake up the screen. Then, of course, the fingerprint scanner speed is fine. 
but yeah i do miss the screen of a 40 over here it's just not there or it's just not working properly in my opinion and even the face unlock if you're wondering about that yes that is working as you can see it shows recognizing face and it unlocks and talking about the app lock too yes the app lock is working fine you do not need to worry about that these are the stock apps that you do get by default here and you get an aperture camera by default there is no miui or the leica camera and stuff those are simply not present do not expect miui cameras over here there is only this aperture camera present by default and the fresh walls and the pixart were downloading that's why these are there but it's not there by default so yeah, except for these two, all other are the stock apps on this ROM. Now let's talk about the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like and in the light theme, it stays light. I like it. And we have this edit icon and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want. But I have added a couple of toggles. Let me show you. I have the Wi-Fi mobile data. The Bluetooth toggle is very simplistic. It just pops out this window. Looks beautiful, I would say. And we have the screen recorder and we do have this HEVC screen recording over here. And you can also use the device audio and microphone audio at the same time. Also the show touches option and the all other features you can use for the screen recording. Auto rate, night light, dark theme, everything is there. Battery saver, do not disturb. Google Home controls is there. Nearby shared data saver, hotspot, the always on display toggle is there. The screencast option is there and the airplane mode, one handed mode. DC dimming and the high brightness or the outdoor bright sun mode is present by default here. And of course you can add them from the edit section. And the brightness slider is on the bottom always because I have customized it that way. There is the auto brightness toggle. And if I show you the power menu, this is how it looks like. And if you have advanced reboot enabled, once you click on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. First, let me show you the display settings. We have the brightness level, adaptive auto brightness, and we have the extra dim in the lock screen. We do have this face unlock switching option to just like when turn on screen or the swiping up. Let me scroll down. We have this show device controls and the control from lock device for Google Home controls. Always show time and info is the always on display. Of course, you can use always on display. And with that, yes, the always on display is working fine with the double tap to wake as you can see. But if you're not using the always on display, that's when the problem occurs of that double tap to wake and stuff. Let me actually show you again. I just disabled the always on display. And now if I double tap, as you can see again, no screen of FOD, no double tap to wake. With the always on display turned off so i'd suggest if you're flashing this from go with always on display that will be a much better experience or just pick up normally will work fine we have this wake screen for notification and stuff and if you scroll down more we have the dark theme the display and text and we have this night light colors you can change to boosted saturated adaptive if you scroll down more we have this wallpaper zoom effect and the window level blurs double tap to wake and we have this ambient display again and if you have it turned off, we have this pickup gesture and you can use the other gestures. Let me go back. We have the custom display settings where you get the DC dimming and the high brightness mode both. Right now, let me just show you the customization section. And this is how it looks like. And the animation definitely I am liking over here. And we have this donate section. You can donate to the developers of this ROM. And we have these themes. And in here, we have this custom theme. You can go with default, black or vivid or monet. And the black is like the pitch black option. And we have this headline and body fonts plethora of fonts you will get including with the nothing dot font and stuff but i have been using it with the default one we have this icon pack choosing option and the signal icon styles are also there these are the icons then we have the wi-fi icon styles too these are the options in the lock screen we have the double tap to wake udf based customization and emissions and stuff you can customize it however you want we do have this cyberpunk 2077 mclaren all those like og kind of thing which kind of animations you will get now here we also have this udf piece icon picker you have this two project elixir icons also you will get other multiple options like the pokemon stuff then we have this red accented fingerprint scanner icons and all other options are there you can see from the screen in the screen of animation we have the default crt or scale ripple effect and the media cover art and the blur background of the media cover art you can customize lock screen charging info does appear while charging and in the status bar we have the double tap to sleep then we have this quick setting quick pull down and you can customize that then we have this 4g icon show wi-fi type and stuff and on the wi-fi icon as you can see it shows five because i'm connected to a five gigahertz wi-fi network we have this roaming indicator show data disabled and the combined signal icons and inside this status bar icons we have this headset bluetooth extra icon customization pretty much let me go back we have this traffic indicator set clock position and in here you will get the background chip and you can customize the clock just like i did and we have this battery style plethora of battery styles look at this we have this landscape art style a l style a r style b etc options also we have this icon landscape and the right left options portrait ios mx and this circle kind of icons all these options are present 
then we have the battery percentage you can change it to inside the icon or next to the icon then we have this charging bolt you can change the color to yellow or default and we have this reticker you can enable it if you want in the quick settings we have this disable sensitive quick setting tiles for privacy i guess and we have this brightness style you can change it to default or outline one and this is how it will look with the outline and you can change this to maybe rectangle and something like that and with that this is how the quick setting style will look so yeah we have all these quick setting panel customization you can use those and even the background opacity of the quick setting panel you can customize there is a fluid quick setting style too but for this one you have to reboot the ui i guess or system ui and we have this vibrate on touch we have this blur media notification artwork background and stuff and we have this brightness slider position changing option you can change it to top or bottom auto brightness icon and the detail usage you can enable then we have the gestures these are basically the system kind of gestures in here let me go back and in the misc settings we have this ignore window secure flags disable power menu on lock screen for privacy and the enable advanced restart then if you scroll down more we have this power menu animation changing option too then we have the long press power button toggle torch and the volume steps you can customize that and we have the in call vibration options unlock higher fps in games hide icons of essence and the game space is also there you can add any game that you would like so these are basically all the customizations which are present on this rom in the wallpaper and styles we can change the wallpapers from here and this is the default wallpaper of this particular rom you can definitely use it if you want so you can change between 16 colors with basic and the wallpaper colors let's talk about battery settings this is how it looks like i like this animation while whenever i'm going into the battery it shows the screen bar it changes colors depending on the battery percentage of course we have the battery temperature on the bottom there is a battery optimization per app you can do that and there is a battery manager but there is no charging cycle seeing option pretty much so you are gonna miss it if you are coming from roms like evolution x again and here if i show you the battery life with the aku battery app that i have tested with as you can see i have got about seven hours plus of screen on time which is decent in my opinion and even the screen of nine days of standby time you can see and the combined use is about four days for me so definitely the battery life of this ROM is amazing. If you're looking at my battery health here, it shows as 97% because it's a brand new battery. That's why I'm getting a very good battery life. I have it about 40 cycles, very new battery. That's why I'm getting very good battery life. And even the fast charging for me has worked perfectly fine here. In the sound and vibration, we have this media called ring to volume controls. And by the way, this is how the volume panel looks like. Let me actually show you from the home screen. And we have this mute and the phone vibration and stuff controlling. Then you can expand the volume panel just like this. The animation definitely looks beautiful. Also, you can switch the output device from right here. You can control the Bluetooth device or the phone speaker from right here. So the volume panel is very convenient. And let me scroll down. We have this vibration and haptics and we have this notification sound and stuff. And we have this pixel sounds if you want all of those. And here we have this nature elements, material adventure, all these ringtones or the notification sounds you can customize from right here if you scroll down more we have this dial pad tone screen locking sound charging sound and vibration per app volume control is of course there there's a screenshot sound you can disable it and we also have this me audio direct and from here you can go with the uh, youth edition and the sound quality with the headphone jack and the bluetooth everything is fine even the presets you can choose to base booster and stuff and the enable hi-fi option is there then we have the haptic feedback or the vibration intensity all over the ui then we have a clear speaker option as well right now let me actually show you the aperture camera i did not even open it this is how it looks like you can take normal photos and videos but i have been using a gcam i'll list this below this is a mgc kind of version of the gcam i feel this is really great because it has the 4k 60 fps working perfectly fine but of course there is this 8k option but it won't work simply and you can switch the input device to the bluetooth audio or just the normal phone mic so this is great you can switch to your bluetooth headsets mic if you want with this camera app that is just great and of course you can switch between the lenses and stuff if you want with this gcam so i am definitely liking it i'll list it below we have this night sight mode and stuff if you want to take the normal photos and stuff the quality overall is great with this one but of course you do not get any kind of miui camera on this particular rom Talking about basic things, yes, it does pass safety net right out of the box, so you do not need to worry about banking apps. And the DRM info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. It does have the Google Photos unlimited backup like Pixel, 
so it will be directed as a pixel device and you will get google photos unlimited backup on this rom right out of the box but in the app lock settings i'm kind of disappointed with this one because you do not simply get the google photos locking option over here except for google photos all other apps you can lock so overall performance i would say is good enough and you can see the performance benchmarks from the screen for daily driving pretty much and of course the display is running at 60 hertz so if you're coming from a high refresh rate rom again you will definitely notice that and if you are on Twitter and if you are just starting to scroll, it will lag for a couple of seconds but afterwards it will be perfectly fine once it loads. So yeah, there is a slight bit of choppiness with 60Hz normally noticeable but yeah, I would say it's a decent experience while scrolling on Twitter and stuff if you are wondering about that. And there is the split top mode and stuff, they should be working perfectly fine, there is no problems with all of those. So yeah, overall for daily driving, I would say it's a decent ROM, no issues. But of course, if you are someone who needs high refresh rate, I definitely recommend going with the Evolution X ROM. There you will also get the MIUI or Leica camera and stuff, which you do not get simply on this particular ROM for the Redmi K20 Pro. Well, that's how I feel. I would personally not choose this particular ROM to daily drive with on the Redmi K20 Pro when there is ROMs like, again, Evolution X. This is my personal preference, your preference may vary and let me in the comments what you think about this ROM. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet shared this video with your friends if you liked it. So this was the Project Elixir ROM based on Android 13 on the Redmi K20 Pro and the latest build. Let me know in the comments again how do you like it. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.